Well, good evening, everyone. I finally got this uh, 1930s, 40s Cooper Hewitt um, desk lamp, <laughs> I guess you might want to say, uh, working. The main issue with it was the shifter on it, which is a starter. It's an electromechanical starting device. It uh, was really badly seized up and it needs to freely bob back and forth in order for it to work. The, the brackets holding it were bent and uh, there was a little bit of corrosion inside of it. So I cleaned that up with some mineral oil and rebent the brackets and finally got, uh, got it to a point where it can freely do what it's supposed to magged out the coils and uh they were good and uh it, it sounds just like the rf fixtures the ballast i would imagine is somewhat similar uh it's got these nichrome i don't know if these are some type of ballasting mechanism but the, these nichrome resistor packs you can see the nichrome wire could be iron as old as it is uh mag these out and they both have the same amount of resistance on them and they get kind of warm when when they've been used i've been running this thing trying to get the voltage settings right on it but they're replaceable so i assume they wear out but uh this particular one has that brown crackle paint from the early part of the century. Here's the one of the numerous labels on the fixture. Right there, made by the lamp department for General Electric. And I got the bulb hooked up. It's got a, a guard here because the ends get quite warm. It's a this whole fixture is it's a 450 watt fixture, which if you see the label here, we'll see the watts, 450. I'll show you how much light it possibly outputs. And uh, interestingly, the bulb, all the uh, RF fixtures have these same bulb holders and it's unique to RF fixtures. And I guess some of these Cooper Hewitt, you can see the label on the bulb right there. Cooper Hewitt Electric Company, and it's got a little image of a lamp hanging. Cooper Hewitt Work Light. And, of course, it's got the model number on it right there. Very, very interesting. There's a shit ton of mercury in this ball, but uh, that little black ball is just loaded with probably three or four teaspoons of mercury up in there. You can see the two anodes right there where the alternating current is split into a rec in one wave to make it rectified and flicker virtually flicker free interestingly the the box the box had uh some interesting labels on it, it says photostat corporation of rochester new york and you cannot make out the address on that one. There's another label right there. Prepaid glass handle with care. And then uh, another label on here. It says the declared value is $150. And if you adjust that from inflation from the 1940s to now, it's about $1,900, which, you know, that seems right. The bulb gets tied onto these little straps, which is a very nice packing mechanism. And uh, this particular one has a, a label for how to hook the various different types of tubes up. And then on the other side, it has a warning. When installing the lamp, remove tape from both ends and wipe off lamp with a clean, damp cloth. Burning position instructions for all lamp types are shown in reverse side. Be sure that all mercury is in the cathode bulb at all times that burning position instructions for this particular lamp type are followed. 
and that mercury is not jarred out of position, shown if lamp is moved while in operation, otherwise premature failures may occur. Lamp contained herein is manufactured by Cooper Hewitt Electric Company, the trademarks appearing herein and on the lamps contained herein are property of Cooper Hewitt Electric Company. Very interesting that they have exclusive markings on the bulb, but yet the fixture is Cooper Hewitt and GE markings. So anyway, you can see it's a vitreous enamel shade. It's got the original wires, which are remarkably in excellent condition, along with the rubber insulated cords on the fixture and you can adjust the height by loosening these knobs and sliding it up and down i mean this had to have been some kind of desk lamp it can go up a little bit higher i just was keeping it low for testing purposes but you can see it swivel over and then the whole entire assembly can go up and down so very interesting the the connections are these bake light connectors which are in perfect pristine connect condition which is remarkable uh the guy that got this said that it had sat in a building for some inordinate amount of time and was very dusty and had a lot of uh blueprinting equipment so i assume this was used as a drafting thing the uh the bulb has these screw-on connectors this unscrews right there and uh it, it's just really neat very interesting um the last bulbs supposedly were sold into the 60s but uh not 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 really any of these are known to be working yet alone um you know even a a fixture with a damn bulb in it. it seems to be hard to find so the the voltage settings i live out in the middle of nowhere so uh i got low voltage out here it's on the higher voltage settings which i think affects the starting so with that being said let me flip the switch here and you can see the shifter doing what it's supposed to do and the bulb will get a little inductive kick out of the coils and eventually the starting voltage about 800 volts will be achieved and it will start so let me shut up here switch the switch oh okay well normally it doesn't start that fast so we'll turn it off still haven't gotten that adjustment right on there oh gosh goofy thing it was fighting me i guess the voltage regulator up the street kicked on <laughs> yeah there we go it's not too terribly loud Sounds just like an RF ballast. I was a little worried that this was an ultraviolet lamp for whatever photo process, but I don't smell any ozone and, you know, maybe I'll know when I get a suntan. And here, it's, you can't really see inside of the bulb here, but the mercury is boiling. Can you see it flickering through the scratches? It's acting as a rectifier. It's just bubbling away. Oh, look at it. Equivalent to a mercury vapor 400 watt high pressure bulb. Maybe a little bit more blue since it's not as high a pressure. It keeps that color spectrum closer towards what low pressure mercury would run at. So, you can see the arc stream. Both ends are lit up, but due to the synchronization of the camera refresh rates it's only capturing one end 
see as the rate shifts, how the camera synchronizes with it, and then the other end goes. <laughs> very, very interesting. So, yeah, we'll turn it off. All right, well, let me get this thing cleaned up and do some more research to make an actual formal video, but I know there are a few people that wanted to see this thing in operation, so there it is. Enjoy.